If you want to get into the Mac market, then you need to be aware of the Coco library. Coco underlies the user interface that is so common across all Mac applications. Coco is a library that's typically programmed with a language called Objective-C. In order to surface it to Delphi Prism via the Mono project, we're going to take advantage of a bridge library called Monobj-C. Monobj-C deals with interacting with the mechanics of how Objective-C libraries operate and surface the functionality of Coco to the Delphi Prism programmer. Documentation is always important when embarking on learning a new library, so it's useful to know that firstly the monobc.net website has a large documentation section documenting the whole of the bridge library, and additionally after installing Apple's Xtools, which is necessary for building Cocoa applications, as we'll see, you also get installed a large quantity of reference material. Let's build a new monobc application in Visual Studio using the monobc application template. This generates a number of source files that at some point or other we will need to become familiar with, but for the time being let's keep things simple and completely ignore all the code. The thing we'll focus our attention on in the project shown here in the Solution Explorer is the nib file. Well actually it's a nib bundle because it's actually a directory filled with other things which happen to be nib files. This nib file is a binary nib file, this nib file is an XML nib file and there's also a source file that represents the interesting content from this nib file. What's a nib file? Well, it's a binary or XML file describing aspects of your user interface and in order to build a user interface we again need to resort to a separate tool. This time it's a tool called Interface Builder that's installed as part of Apple's Xtools, the free development toolkit that's on your OS X installation DVD or available for download from Apple's website. Let's load the nib file into Interface Builder. Here is my project directory sat inside of Finder and here is the nib bundle. Uh, we can open this directly into Interface Builder which opens up with a number of windows open. Let's see what it's got to offer us. This window here with the caption that matches the nib file name is the document window and lists out the things contained within the nib file. This includes a representation of the application object, a representation of the window, a representation of the menu and also a window controller. The Coco library follows the MVC design pattern. The window, if we expand it, also happens to contain a toolbar and a content view area. The menu, well if we expanded that we'd see the individual menus and menu items. The window up here is a rendering of the window represented in the nib file. So we can see the toolbar and we can see the content area. Uh, we can also, sitting behind here, we can see the menu being represented in the menu editor. In order to extend the user interface of the application, uh, we can use the library window over here, which may or may not be visible. It's always accessible on the tools menu, tools library. The, t the library window lists out all of the controls and classes we have available to us. Um, there's quite a large list. We're specifically interested in the Coco section of the hierarchy here. Uh, there are a lot of controls available here and sometimes it can take a little while to find the exact one you're looking for. I'm looking for a text view so I'll just use the search option to locate a text view which I can then drag onto my content view get it sized using the design guides such that it's a sensible dimension. In order to modify the attributes of the text view I can use the inspector which has a number of sub pages which are all listed here on the menu but we can access them also using these buttons. On the attributes page we can modify certain simple uh, uh, properties such as the border style, um, tell it to auto hide the scroll bars until they become necessary there is a size page where we can specify that, for example, when the parent window gets resized, we would like the text view to also be resized, and the little animation shows you what it's referring to here. The menu is reasonably comprehensive. We've got a system menu, we've got a file menu, an edit menu, a window menu. We can find other menus sitting in the library window. For example, there's a format menu. You'll notice that our toolbar allows color and font formatting in theory and in fact in practice as we'll see. The format menu offers similar options but is not present on the default menu that we get from our Monobj-C application template. So let's add the format menu in there. So I think possibly I'll need to select that. There we go. 
pop it in there, drop it there, we now have a format menu which looks like that. Okay, something else we'll probably need to do to the menu bar to make it a little bit more um, appropriate is to replace the references to new application with the actual application name. So to edit this we can either use the attributes page on the inspector window or you can simply double click and start typing in new text. So maybe we're going to build a text editor application. So uh, I'll take that text there and replace that and replace that and also replace that. There we go. This bold um, representation of new application here is a bit pointless editing that one because that is dynamically set at runtime to the actual application name. Any changes I make are completely ignored. Okay, that is my UI essentially designed, so let's save the changes, switch back to Visual Studio and build the project. Okay, the build is successful, so now we can go and test out whether this application works. Now to test the application. Here is an OSX prompt and we're going to open up the application from the prompt. The application is deployed as an app bundle. Cocoa applications in general are deployed as app bundles simply due to the way they're architected, the way their resources are expected to be located and so on. We can still open up a package or app bundle from the command prompt though using the open command. So this is the project directory. That is the directory where all the output goes, including the app bundle. That is the name of the app bundle directory. And there's our application. So we have an application running. We can type text into it. We can bring up color dialogues. We can bring up font dialogues. We can change things as we see fit, and then when we're done with messing about with it, we can maybe change the page setup for printing purposes and then go ahead and print. Um, I don't actually have a printer installed, but I can certainly look at what it would uh, look like when printed. So a certain amount of application there given to us completely for free, hooked up and operational right from the off 